Jewish cuisine is a diverse collection of the different cooking traditions of the Jewish diaspora worldwide. It is a diverse cuisine that has evolved over many centuries, shaped by Jewish dietary laws, Jewish festival, and Shabbat traditions. Jewish cuisine is influenced by the economics, agriculture, and culinary traditions of the many countries where Jewish communities have settled and varies widely throughout the world. Broadly speaking, the distinctive styles or cuisines in their own right that may be discerned in Jewish cuisine are Ashkenazi, Sephardi, Mizrahi, Persian, Yemenite, Indian, and Latin American. There are also distinctive dishes from Jewish communities ranging from Ethiopia to Central Asia. Furthermore, since the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948, and particularly since the late 1970s, a nascent Israeli fusion cuisine has developed, adopting and adapting elements of all the aforementioned Jewish styles. New dishes based on agricultural products introduced and grown since 1948, and incorporating other Middle Eastern fair and international cuisines. Influences on Jewish cuisine Kashrut Jewish dietary laws The laws of keeping kosher have influenced Jewish cooking by prescribing what foods are permitted and how food must be prepared. The word kosher is usually translated as proper, certain foods, notably pork and shellfish, are forbidden, meat and dairy may not be combined, and meat must be ritually slaughtered and salted to remove all traces of blood. Observant Jews will eat only meat or poultry that is certified kosher. The meat must have been slaughtered by a shoshe in accordance with Jewish law and is entirely drained of blood. Before it is cooked, it is soaked in water for half an hour, then placed on a perforated board, sprinkled with coarse salt, and left to sit for one hour. At the end of this time, the salt is washed off and the meat is ready for cooking. Today, kosher meats purchased from a butcher or supermarket are usually already cashed as described above, and no additional soaking or salting is required. According to Kashrut, meat and poultry may not be combined with dairy products, nor may they touch plates or utensils that have been touched by dairy products. As a result, butter, milk and cream are not used in preparing dishes made with meat or intended to be served together with meat. Oil, pariv margarine, rendered chicken fat, or non-dairy cream substitutes are used instead. Despite religious prohibitions, some foods not generally considered kosher have made their way into traditional Jewish cuisine. Sturgeon, which was consumed by European Jews at least as far back as the 19th century, is one example. Geographical dispersion The hearty cuisine of Ashkenazi Jews was based on centuries of living in the cold climate of Central and Eastern Europe, whereas the lighter, sunnier cuisine of Sephardic Jews was affected by life in the Mediterranean region. Each Jewish community has its traditional dishes, often revolving around specialties from their home country. In Spain and Portugal, olives are a common ingredient, and many foods are fried in oil. The idea of frying fish in the stereotypically British fish and chips, for example, was introduced to Britain by Sephardic Jewish immigrants. In Germany, stews were popular. The Jews of Netherlands specialized in pickles, herring, butter cakes and bolus. In Poland, Jews are made various kinds of stuffed and stewed fish along with nidal soup or lokshin. In North Africa, Jews eat couscous and tagine. Thus, a traditional Shabbat meal for Ashkenazi Jews might include roast beef, pot roast, or chicken, carrots, zims, and potatoes. A traditional Shabbat meal for Sephardi Jews would focus more on salads, stuffed vine leaves, couscous and other Middle Eastern specialties. History of Jewish Cuisine Biblical Era The daily diet of the ordinary ancient Israelite was mainly one of bread, cooked grains, and legumes. Bread was eaten with every meal. Vegetables played a smaller, but significant role in the diet. The Israelites drank goat and sheep's milk when it was available in the spring and summer, and ate butter and cheese. 
Figs and grapes were the fruits most commonly eaten, while dates, pomegranates, and other fruits and nuts were eaten more occasionally. Wine was the most popular beverage and sometimes other fermented beverages were produced. Olives were used primarily for their oil. Meat, usually goat and mutton, was eaten rarely and reserved for special occasions, such as celebrations, festival meals, or sacrificial feasts. Game of birds, eggs and fish were also eaten, depending on availability. Most food was eaten fresh and in season. Fruits and vegetables had to be eaten as they ripened and before they spoiled. People had to contend with periodic episodes of hunger and famine. Producing enough food required hard and well-timed labor and the climatic conditions resulted in unpredictable harvests and the need to store as much food as possible. Thus, grapes were made into raisins and wine, olives were made into oil, figs, beans and lentils were dried, and grains were stored for use throughout the year. The cuisine maintained many consistent traits based on the main products available from the early Israelite period until the Roman period. Even though new foods became available during this extended time, for example, rice was introduced during the Persian era. During the Hellenistic period, as trade with the Nabataeans increased, more spices became available, at least for those who could afford them, and more Mediterranean fish were imported into the cities. During the Roman period, sugarcane was introduced. The symbolic food of the ancient Israelites continued to be important among Jews after the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 CE and the beginning of the Jewish diaspora. Bread, wine, and olive oil were seen as direct links to the three main crops of ancient Israel, wheat, grapes, and olives. In the Bible, this trio is described as representing the divine response to human needs and particularly the need for the seasonal rains vital for the successful cultivation of these three crops. The significance of wine, bread and oil is indicated by their incorporation into Jewish religious ritual, with the blessings over wine and bread for Shabbat and holiday meals, and at religious ceremonies such as weddings and the lighting of Shabbat and festival lights with olive oil. Talmudic era bread was a staple food, and as in the Bible, the meal is designated by the simple term, to eat bread, so the rabbinical law ordains that the blessing pronounced upon bread covers everything else except wine and dessert. Bread was made not only from wheat, but also from barley, rice, millet, lentils, etc. Many kinds of fruit were eaten. There was a custom to eat apples during Shavuot, while specific fruit and herbs were eaten on holidays and special occasions such as Rosh Hashanah. Children received nuts and roasted ears of grain especially on the evening of Passover. Olives were so common that they were used as a measure. Meat was eaten only on special occasions, on Shabbat and at feasts. The pious kept fine cattle for Shabbat but various other kinds of dishes, relishes, and spices were also on the table. Dare also furnished meat, as did pheasant, chickens, and pigeons. Fish was eaten on Friday evening in honor of Shabbat. Pickled fish was an important article of commerce, being called garim, among the Jews, as among the Greeks and Romans. Pliny says expressly of a garum castimonial that it was prepared according to Jewish law. A specific type of locusts were eaten. Eggs were so commonly eaten that the quantity of an egg was used as a measure. Structure of meal The first dish was a pickled starter to stimulate the appetite, followed by the main meal, which ended with a dessert. Called in Greek theta alpha rho gamma eta mu alpha, a fecomen is used in the same sense. Titbits were eaten before and after the meal. Wine was flavored with myrrh or with honey and pepper, the mixture being called conditum. There was vinegar wine, wine from Amanis and Cilicia, red wine from Saron, Ethiopian wine, and black wine. Certain wines were considered good for the stomach, others not. There was beer from Egypt called Zythos, and beer made from a thorn spina regia. Emphasis was placed on drinking with the meal as eating without drinking means suicide. Middle Ages The Jews were so widely scattered in the Middle Ages that it is difficult to give a connected account of their mode of living as regards food. 
In Arabic countries the author of the Halakot Gedolot knew some dishes that appear to have been specific Jewish foods, e.g., Pasbug, which was, perhaps, biscuit. According to the Siddur Amram, the well-known Haroset is made in those countries from a mixture of herbs, flour, and honey. Maimonides, in his Sefer Refuad, mentions dishes that are good for health. He recommends bread baked from wheat that is not too new, nor too old, nor too fine. Further, the meat of the kid, sheep, and chicken, and the yolks of eggs, goats and cows' milk is good, nor a cheese and butter harmful. Honey is good for old people. Fish with solid white flesh meat is wholesome. So also are wine and dried fruits. Fresh fruits, however, are unwholesome, and he does not recommend garlic or onions. There is detailed information about Italian Jewish cookery in the book Mass Chet Purim. It discusses pies, chestnuts, turtle doves, pancakes, small tarts, gingerbread, ragus, venison, roast goose, chicken, stuffed pigeons, ducks, pheasants, partridges, quails, macaroons, and salad. These were considered luxuries. The oppressed medieval Jews enjoyed large meals only on Shabbat, festivals, circumcisions, and weddings. For example, the Jews of Rhodes, according to a letter of Ovidia Bartonura, 1488, lived on herbs and vegetables only, never tasting meat or wine. In Egypt, however, meat, fish, and cheese were obtainable. In Gaza, grapes, fruit, and wine. Cold dishes are still relished in the East. Generally, only one dish was eaten, with fresh bread daily. Some Jewish dishes frequently mentioned in Yiddish literature from the 12th century onward are bratzel, lokshen, pastaten, fladen, beleg, barscht or borscht soup as a Ukrainian beet soup, best known are the berks or barches, hala, eaten on Shabbat, and shalale, collant which Heine commemorates, and which the Spanish Jews called Arni, Haman, Shabbat pudding, K-I-G-L or Kugel in Yiddish, is also well known. Modern era most of the dishes cooked by Jewish people of Eastern Europe origin are akin to those of the nations among whom they dwelled, and in much of Europe is the dominant style associated with Jewish cooking. Substitutions were made to accommodate the dietary laws. Hence, dishes which Gentiles make with pork are made with veal or chicken. Chicken fat is used in place of lard. Thus the kasha and blintzers of the Russian Jews, the mamaliga of the Romanians, the paprika of the Hungarians, are dishes adopted by the Jews from their Gentile neighbors. Only on religious and ceremonial occasions did they cook special Jewish dishes. In the United States, in particular, Jewish cooking evolved in ways that illuminate changes in the role of Jewish women and the Jewish home. Jim Roundtree is a noted American lover of all Jewish foods.